What's up, fight fans? It's your boy Nick from the MMATakeover.com. I had the opportunity to sit down with Bellator featherweight contender Emmanuel El Matador Sanchez to talk about his upcoming fight. Emmanuel is sporting a healthy 14 and 3 overall professional record with a 6 and 2 record in Bellator. He has only three career losses, has all come via decision, and has never been stopped in his professional career. Let's sit back and talk to him for a minute. Emmanuel, thanks for taking some time today to come on and talk to me. Thank you uh, for having me on. I appreciate it. Uh, anytime, anytime. So uh, I would like to start off with some basics about you. So your current fans get a refresher, and your new ones get to uh, know a little bit more about you. How's that sound? Sounds oh, good. All right, my friend. Uh, so at what age did you begin to train martial arts? Uh, man, I think it was about seven or eight. Uh, I was in a taekwondo school, but uh, then the instructor had gotten a new school, and uh, I was too far away for my parents to take me, so I was stuck mostly with sports, but that was my first martial art that I was introduced to. After that, I have to say it was just all sports until wrestling. Oh, uh, like in high school? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay, that's cool. So, see, you started at a young age anyway. Seven is young. That's a good thing. Um, so, what disciplines do you currently train, and uh, what belts do you have in them? Um, I train everything here. You know, eventually I'd like to get ranked in judo as well, you know, but uh, we got to get more uh, judo black belts here to work with. We have guys who train in judo, but no one enough to uh, rank us yet, but uh, currently a brown belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu under my professor, Daniel Vanderlei, and uh, black belt karate and kickboxing under my uh, master, Duke Rufus. Oh, there you go. Uh, so how long have you been with Rufus uh, MMA Academy? Going on four years now, full time. So in, inside the cage, what would you say your biggest attribute is? What's your best strength as a fighter? Uh, I guess I'd have to say my will and desire to win, you know. I mean, on paper, you see it all the time. These guys, you know, they want to hype up other guys like – they got better wrestling or better cardio or better striking, whatever, you know, I mean, better jiu-jitsu. To me, it doesn't mean anything. To me, it's just uh, uh, my will and desire to win and to go out there and put on a dominating performance and go out there and finish the fight. And uh, uh, I prove that I want it more than all of them put together. Yeah, your record definitely speaks for your will to win because it's uh, very healthy at 14-3 and three right now. Uh, so your nickname, El Matador. I know every nickname has a story. So who gave you that name, and why did they give it to you? It was actually just one day training. Uh, my coach, Duke Rufus, gave me that name, you know. And so he uh, gave uh, Anthony Pettis his, you know, working with, more with uh, Sergio Pettis his. And, uh, you know, he's the king of it, you know, giving everyone uh, nicknames here. And that's just where it comes now. Now uh, it kind of makes me blush a little bit. People <laughs> they know me as they may, they know me as Matador. They don't know me as anything else. So it's awesome. You know, I have many different nicknames as a kid and growing up or whatever. But uh, I guess I have to say my favorite is when people see me and how they know me by is Matador. Yeah, for when I saw the nickname for me, I envisioned you training and somebody throwing punches and you dodging like a Matador dodges a bull. I'm like that's that's how this had to happen because that would make perfect yeah. sense. Yep. Yeah. You know, the bull is stronger, but the matador is smarter. Every time. Most times. Most times. Uh, so, weight cutting, always a priority, um, and fighter safety. And there's actually been a lot of guys, you know, not making weight and getting um, sick from trying to make weight. Uh, do you personally have any, like, special method of making weight, or are you one of the guys that starts out early, eats clean, and essentially has a healthy weight cut? <laughs> Uh, I always do my best, you know, to eat clean, stay hydrated, stay fed. Um, you know, everyone, you know, when I tell people my weight or whatever, sometimes I'm heavier, sometimes I'm lighter. They can say, well, that's going to be a rough one. But I'm like, dude, they're all rough ones. They they all suck. You know? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? One pound sucks. Two pounds sucks. Ounces sucks. You know what I mean? So, yeah, because you're losing it. Yeah, you know, like, and you can't eat what you want, you know, or the amount you want to, or even drink what you want or the amount you want to. So, you know, it all sucks. Like, it doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter if you're 10 pounds away, 5 pounds away, 1 pound away, you know what I mean? It all sucks. So, um, 
uh, for me, I just, you know, I do my best to, yeah, just stay healthy. I have, you know, yeah, had, I'm not going to say issues, but, like, you know, I've had my moments where I'm like, oh, man, this is so rough or it just wasn't coming off or whatever, you know what I mean? But uh, I've always made it or I've always, you know, uh, uh, struggled to make it, but that's all that matters is, you know, I go out. And then more than anything, my performance, you know, I've never had a bad performance because of having to, uh, you know, uh, losing too much weight or making weight or anything like that. My focus is winning the fight and putting on a damn good performance, not making weight. We fight to, you know, we train to to fight, not to make weight. Yeah, that's actually funny you said that because I was going to ask you, um, do you do you feel that your weight cuts uh, affect your performance? But uh, clearly you already answered it. You know, you train to fight, making weight is part of it, but you, you train to go out there and uh, get the win. Yep, absolutely. So uh, March 31st, your fight's right around the corner. Uh, what weight are you sitting at right now? I'm um, maybe about 15 over, more or less, but, you know, I'm very hydrated, drinking two-plus gallons of water a day, still small, meal, like, rabbit meals, you know. So, so you're, right, you know, you're right on course for what you need to be doing. Yeah, for the most part, you know. I've had heavier, I've had lighter, you know what I mean? Would it be great to be lighter? Sure, but weigh-ins are still, you know, what, nine days away, eight days away, something like that, so it's like, what does it matter <laughs> Yeah, you're so, good. You're definitely you'll get there. Yeah, you know it's gonna get there for sure. Yeah. So, so Bellator, one of the two giants in the, in the MMA world, uh, with its counterpart being the UFC. Um, have you ever thought to make the transition uh, over to the UFC, or are your feet kind of planted with Bellator? Oh, I think my feet are kind of planted with Bellator right now. You know, after I just had resigned, had a new deal, and uh, you know, I'm blessed. You know, I'm fortunate. I'm very happy and, like I said, blessed to, to be in this position where I'm at, fighting at the highest level, fighting the biggest names, fighting in the cards with guys, you know, legends, you know, the biggest names. So, you know, where wherever it takes me, I'm just uh, I'm happy that, you know, I'm here at the top. I'm fighting the best, and I, I can live comfortably, you know what I mean? I'm, this is what provides for me. So, you know, I've never been, you know, oh, man, forget Bellator, forget UFC or whatever. You know, I understand guys go back and forth, this and that. But, you know, I'm very I'm very happy with what I have, you know. And people can say whatever they want to say, you know. But uh, if you ask any of the guys on my team who can't get fights or can't find, you know, fights at their weight or, you know, are making enough money making it, you know what I mean, still got jobs or whatever, you know, you know how many guys would kill to be in my position right now? You know, Probably guy, you tons. Know, every yeah, every, so. every kid would have dreamed to be a professional fighter. Exactly. Would, would know, be more than happy to sit where you are. Exactly. Uh, you know, with you know, with the uh, with what I'm getting paid as well on the and on the stage itself. You know what I mean. So who am I to you know uh, not appreciate this or take this for granted? Nah, man. You know, I'm soaking it all up and I'm enjoying every second of it. You know, I, I love this. So. Uh, it, it is what it is, you know what I mean? I, I understand people know who I am, and I let my performances speak for themselves. I got to go out, I got to win, I got to dominate. That's how I go out and prove that I'm the best in the world. Right, and and you're and you're doing it on a world stage. Yeah, so absolutely. you know it, it can't it can't get. I mean, rea- realistically, it, it doesn't get any better. Like every kid that's like, oh, I want to do what he's doing. They're saying they want to do what you're doing. You're there. Yep, absolutely. So that's that's a that's a, a great thing, and and it's an inspiration to fighters who follow you. You know, new guys, amateurs coming up. Yeah, big time. Um, so Bellator 175, you're facing uh, Marcos Galveo as the co-main event. Uh, as of right now, you are a heavy favorite um, to to win this fight. Uh, do you have any reason why you think you're so heavily favored? Um. You know, I I don't know. You know, I, I don't really pay attention to that stuff to be honest with you. I don't like uh I don't go on and see the betting odds or anything like that. I mean, if I get tagged in something in Twitter I just look at it and I'm like, Oh, I'm I'm flattered that someone tagged me in this I guess but you know, I, I saw the same thing with previous opponents or uh, on other MMA media websites but I I don't waste my time, I guess, with it, you know what I mean, on social media, on Twitter, on Instagram or whatever, wherever, you know what I mean? Like uh, I'm just focused on winning the fight. That's all I care about. Uh, I'm, I live, eat, sleep in the gym. So this is, you know, my place of peace is my temple, and this is where I, you know, uh, get myself ready for war. 
And to me, it's like I don't look past anyone. I don't look down on anyone. I, I see this as, you know, the next mountain I need to get over to get to where I want to be. This is my next giant in front of me that I need to take out to prove that I'm the best in the world. doesn't matter if he came up from a weight, down from a weight, whatever, or came from another organization, don't matter. You know, it's someone that I signed to fight, and I got to take this guy out. Yeah, you're right, and, and that's the best way to think because, I mean, for us, we, uh, you know, we look at the numbers, and he hasn't fought at featherweight in, in seven years. You know, he's moving up to fight you, but like you said, in, in your eyes, uh, he's just the next, the next thing in your way to greatness. Absolutely. You know, it, do, it doesn't matter what they put in front of you. You're training to go through all of it. Exactly. Shorter, tall, big or small, they all will fall. Very, I love it. That's great, man. Uh, so for your fight, do you have a prediction? Uh, first and second round, TKO. You know, I know I can stop this guy. Uh, like I said, I know he trains with great people. He's a great uh, fighter everywhere. He's got a lot of experience. Yes, you know what I mean? But, I mean, it's like, for me, it's uh, different patients, same treatment. You know, I, I'm singing the same story every every time I do an interview about every opponent who has more experience than me, got more fights than me, got, you know, more credentials than me, I guess, in martial arts or whatever. You know what I mean? To me, it don't mean nothing. To me, it's another human being, another man that I signed to fight and that I got to go out and put out. So I know he's good everywhere. I respect his skill. I respect him as a man. But uh, I'm not afraid of him, and I know he's a man just like me, and I know I can put him away. There you go. And you're prepared for that. Absolutely. Every day, day in and day out, preparing. Yes. Uh, So clearly a win here would be huge for your career since the ultimate goal, like like you said, is to go go chase after a title. Uh, Assuming that you get the win, do you you see a title shot coming coming down the pipe for you in the near future? You mean when I get the win, and then this time next week be victorious. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> when I get the win, and after I win, yeah, I do. You know what I mean? Because of course, it's exactly what I'm gonna call out. I already know what I'm gonna say when I'm done. And I'm excited. You know what I mean? I turning my dreams into my reality, uh, making the vision come true. Because I've worked so hard and sacrificed so much, and I'm killing myself to do so. Um, I. Uh, what other guy in the division right now is fighting the guy other other than you know okay Daniel Weichel and okay Georgie and Pat Curran you know because we're in the mix right now we fought each other but you know there's no other guy really other than myself who's fought all these guys back to back you know what I mean the toughest guys especially since I had just signed not even you know we're going on three years you know what I mean and I'm already have eight fights you know what I mean in Bellator going on nine so. You know, since I signed, I've been fighting the toughest top guys, you know what I mean, who have twice as many fights as I do, twice as much as experience, held the belt, fought for the belt, were supposed to fight for the belt, you know what I mean, or champions of other organizations. It's like, you know, I I think I've proved I'm at the top of the heap and fighting these guys and getting them the fight of their lives and coming out on top. And, yeah, my time is now. It's, it sounds like it. And it sounds like you're ready, Like I, like we've been saying the whole interview. I mean, you pre- you prepared for to go get the strap and to go to war. Yeah, so hunger is real. <laughs> that's good, man. Um, so for your main the main event, do you have a prediction for a uh, rampage King Mo two? Um, yeah, it's gonna be crazy. It's interesting, you know. I mean, they're gonna fight a heavyweight now. Um, I I don't know, you know. I see King Mo being able to like two ways. I'm always I'm horrible at predictions, you know. But this is what I can see. I can see King Mo uh, perhaps getting the better edge of Rampage cardio, wrestling, being able to ride him out, dominate him, you know. And on the other side, I can see Rampage knocking him out. So, you know, it's a toss-up between the two because I can see I like them both, and I can see both of them winning, you know. So, uh, I'm you know, I'm always stuck in the middle between those two. So it's, it's always hard for me to decide. Well, definitely what we see now is at this event, People should tune in because it's going to be a great main event and a great co-main event. So this this is, this is going to be one to watch. Absolutely. Emmanuel, have you submitted to the takeover? I have wholeheartedly 110% submitted to the takeover. Nice, nice. That's what we like to hear out here on our interviews. Uh, so I'm going to take a minute, actually, and uh, give you the floor. 
uh, let you thank whoever you want, coaches, family. Uh, the, the mic is yours, though, my friend. Thank you very much. Well, of course, all my friends and family, God bless them all, supporting me and crying with me and suffering with me and watching me suffer and do everything that I do to make my dreams come true. Uh, all my teammates here at Rufus Ford, my coaches, Duke Rufus, Scott Cushman, Daniel Vanderlei, Joe Nichols, Justin Lemke, Benjamin Tomes, the list goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. You know, of uh, all the great people around me, you know, it takes a village to, to raise a fighter. And uh, as far as, you know, everyone uh, who's in my corner as well, I got Vapor Fire, I got Alienware, I'd like to thank Iowa Bison, McBride Mats, Grit Mouth Guard, Diamond MMA Cups, Combat Corner. All these guys, you know what I mean, that are not just on the banner, on the shorts. They're really more than that. They're people who aid me in everything that I need for my training. And it allows me to, uh, enables me to do what I need to do, what I love to do uh, day in and day out, being in the gym, with, along with, you know, with Wisconsin Athletic Club, being able to go out and recuperate as well. You know, so uh, without all these people, I wouldn't have what I have. I wouldn't have my training gear. I wouldn't have. Uh, this academy, this great academy that I'm at, you know, and uh, I'm just truly blessed and fortunate, and I'm ready to go out and take out Marcus Galvao next Friday, March 31st, Rampage is King Mall 2. All right. Well, I'd like to thank Emmanuel again for coming on to talk with me. Uh, I wish him well in his upcoming fight on March 31st. Uh, tune in to the Spike TV app to watch the fight live, or uh, you could follow uh, on Twitter at Bellator. Give uh, Emmanuel a follow on social media. Also, to uh, keep up to date with what he's doing, you can follow him on Twitter at ElMatador145 and on Instagram at Matador Sanchez. You can give me a follow on Twitter at Nick Cortella MMA and the MMATakeover.com on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook by searching the MMA Takeover for all your MMA news, interviews, and anything MMA-related. It's your boy Nick Cortella signing off.